the faces that only my wife usually gets to see. Welcome to Seeing Through Glass. What a beautiful morning it has been. I've left Luxembourg behind me, currently in Belgium, on my way to the Netherlands. Now I'm fully aware I have many Dutch viewers. I'm also aware I haven't really spent much time in your country in the past, so I'm determined to fix that over the next few days. I have some epic stuff lined up, so I can't really wait for what's in store. I have to say, one thing that this morning has really reminded me of is just how good a cruiser this car is. Obviously set off relatively early, been on the road for a couple of hours already and it's just so happy sitting at 75 or 80 miles an hour. Especially now I've got this Bluetooth adapter for the stereo, I've just got my music on, visibility is fantastic, I've been able to enjoy this incredible sunrise and yeah, it's just a comfy place to be. You wouldn't necessarily think of it for a 20 year old Ferrari being a good GT car, but, but it really is. Um, one thing I would say though, French motorways, not fantastic. Fantastic in terms of road quality. A little bit bumpy and I don't like the tarmac, it's a bit noisy. Maybe I'm just being a little bit moody because I haven't had my caffeine, but that's now gonna get sorted out. So yes, onwards to the Netherlands. Well, that beautiful sunrise in Belgium this morning has actually turned into a bit of a cloudy day in the Netherlands, but I don't care because I have made it to my first destination in the Netherlands, Prins. And as you can see, these guys specialize in Ferraris. Well, actually they specialize in a lot of things. They are Alfa Romeo and Abarth dealers, but they also do some sort of specialist car sales as well. And inside they've got some incredibly spec Ferraris amongst some other stuff. So let's go and check that out before we hit the road in one of their very special cars. So if we go past a very cool Z8, come and look at the interior of this 488 Spider. <gasps> Chocolata with a yellow stripe. It's actually a tailor-made car, which you can see by that badge at the back. And oh my God, I think that is delightful. But actually, so is that 812 GTS and the interior of this 488 Coupe. <gasps> This is just winning. So yeah, both of these, which are actually sort of semi-matching right up my street. Upstairs we have some more juicy bits. Obviously this being an Abarth dealer, I can't walk past all the Abarths and not talk about them. Very nice 695 Arrivale there. If I lived in Monaco, I'd probably have that. But I'm walking backwards because the madness doth continue. The Ferrari madness doth continue. A very nice, clean looking 612 Scaglietti with another stunning interior. The Netherlands clearly know how to spec a Ferrari, or maybe it's this Prince know how to buy in used Ferraris. Also a fan of this DBS. Oh, what a stunning looking car uh, with the auto box, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because the thing is just so damn pretty. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely amazing. And then you can come over here, look out the window, see a wonderful 360. Another beautiful 612 Scaletti that I walked past, a 512 BB and Yes, a Testarossa Monospecchio. And this is actually the car that I'm here to drive today. I've never driven a Testarossa, one of Ferrari's most iconic cars. But the last 12 to 18 months, a few of my friends have actually gone out and bought them. Uh, Merlin at the Duke of London, TGE. Uh, Chris Harris famously owned one for a long time, but I think he's just sold it. I've always been very intrigued. In the UK, 
can pick these up still for under 100k and that seems like a bit of a bargain when you consider it's one of the very few mid-engined 12 cylinder Ferraris. So I cannot wait for this experience. Let's get the GoPros on and hit the road. <laughs> Will I close that enough? Maybe that needs a bit more of a whack. There we go, a bit, bit more of a solid thud, I think. Now this car's from 1985 and, and it feels like it in terms of design and layout. Everything is a little bit more old school than with my car. But I guess that's why Testarossa is so cool and so desirable, because it's just a, a different era, isn't it? Um, the pedals are quite extremely offset and because of my long legs, look, if I'm on the accelerator pedal in first gear, that's going to be knocking or I'm going to be knocking the steering wheel. Also, it's a dog leg first, so over and down. That's going to take some getting used to, as is apparently the clutch. Famously, clutch is quite fragile in this car, so you've got to be very careful, make sure it's fully engaged at times and things like that. Whole thing needs to warm up. Uh, so, let's see what we do. Um, let's disengage first for a second. Turn everything on. And try and start this up. fires into life. No great theatrics. In 1985 you didn't need the whole and this is a flat 12 not a V12 so the sound characteristics are slightly different. I don't know why I'm a tad nervous. I think maybe just because of the sort of expectations of a Testarossa. Let's pull out nice and carefully. <laughs> Feels big this car. And hit the road in a Testarossa. Monospecchio! Oh! driving for about half an hour now and I'm only just starting to see some movement on the temperature gauges. So it's giving me a little bit of confidence to start pushing on but not a whole load of confidence. I've ended up in some kind of beautiful forest stage. I feel more like I'm in Scandinavia or parts of kind of Washington state than the Netherlands but yeah it's absolutely mega. Very narrow single track road so not really the place to do speed but gives me a chance to at least talk through some of my initial impressions of this car. It does feel wide and as I mentioned kind of old school but that's really the, the joy of it. You feel like you've been transported to a more manly era, uh, an era where people had hairs on their chests. Uh, I guess women have hairs on their chests too, it's 2022, I mustn't forget my female demographic. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a rugged Ferrari, it's not a sort of, you know, a pretty delightful thing, it's a, it's a macho 12 cylinder thing that you've got to really grab by the scruff of its neck. Uh, the gearbox does take a little bit of getting used to in the sense that it's well, not particularly smooth. You know, you've got that dog leg, but everything's kind of clunky and chunky. That may get better as the temperatures increase. I'm trying to keep an eye on my phone sat nav. I have to say this car's ahead of its time with, well look, basically I've created my own Apple CarPlay. <laughs> the perfect place to rest my phone. I do think when I accelerate, that's going to come flying backwards, but we'll deal with that when that happens. opened up a bit. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. It's a very mechanical noise from over my shoulder and all oh, that's a big bus. Whoa. Yes. Okay, this maybe isn't the place to be doing this. There seems to be a lot of other traffic and cyclists. It is the Netherlands, there are cyclists. But you know what, it's it's old school speed. This thing isn't gonna set any record books on fire. You're not gonna be in here being like, oh my God, I can't hold on to it. It's just about building speed sort of over time and working your way through this fairly clunky gearbox and really, ooh, be careful of the clutch, which, which I just wasn't. You've got to really basically come fully off it. A bit like the Carrera GT. <laughs> Who would have thought that was a comparison I'd make? But you know me, I love a quirky comparison. 
it, it's kind of got more of a Grand Tourer feel to it than an out-and-out mid-engine supercar, which is maybe what the Testarossa was kind of about. You've got to remember, Ferrari's Halo 12-cylinder cars are Grand Tours. It was just for the Testarossa that decided to put the engine in, in the middle instead of the front, as was the norm forever. So this was, you know, to buck the trend. And, you know, 1985, it's just, it's just cool. And the fact that now, 95, 2005, 2015, nearly 40 years later, this thing is still cool, sort of, I think, means that Ferrari really got it right. Now, knowing me well, and knowing I had a long drive this morning, the awesome team at Prince have very kindly recommended a local coffee shop for me to head to, which is what I'm doing now, but it has meant a little in-town driving, which is stressful to say the least. That sort of slightly fragile clutch, the clunky gearbox, no power steering, the lack of a right-hand side wing mirror, mono specchio might look cool, but slightly impractical in town, is just, yep, raising my heartbeat a little too high. Um, mainly because this isn't my car. I'm sure if it was and I got used to it, I'd be totally fine in this situation, but I'm not, I'm freaking out. Um, so yeah, kind of just want to pull over now. Um, where is this coffee shop? I'm really hoping this is it. Look at this platter. <laughs> I've never seen an espresso displayed so lovingly. I've even got a little cake, a little cup of water. Um, we are in Harder Wijk. Uh, as an Englishman, speaking Dutch, very difficult. Um, but the coffee shop's name is much easier. Bistro Wiestmarkt 49. And yeah, I am loving this. And I'm loving Testarossa life. This is what it's all about. Look at it. Sitting here right now, my coffee just enjoying my car. It, it works in this setting perfectly. Uh, I'm just waiting for the guys from Prince to come and join me, but I'm going to be rude and start sipping on my espresso. I can hear a V12. <laughs> I can hear a V12. <gasps> oh my giddy aunt. <laughs> No <laughs> oh my lord. Okay, so they just said, yeah, we'll come and join you for a coffee. I didn't realize in this 812 GTS and Ari just said with a Novatech exhaust. I mean, we might get kicked out of yeah. this town in a second. This is insane. I mean, Go the coffee spot was good enough, mate. <laughs> this is next level. <gasps> and look at these two together. Oh my God, unbelievable to see and to hear. I mean, I heard you coming from a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> right, should we get coffee? Let's go. I think Prince might be becoming my favorite dealership in the world whilst having coffee they said would well, you want to drive the 812 gts back instead of the testarossa and as cool as the testarossa experience has been and as much as i feel like i still wanted to explore it more i'm not going to turn this down am i <laughs> there's a load of kids here with uh, camera phones waiting for the startup so let's not disappoint them uh, here we go <laughs> I'm actually embarrassed. This is gonna be crazy. Um, now the guys from Prince are in the test also next to me. I'm gonna be following them. Others are gonna get lost. Hopefully they won't hold me up. Uh, but this car is more, more about sound than speed today. Now it's important for me to say this car isn't actually for sale with Prince. They've already sold it. They asked the owner if they could borrow it today for me to experience. So I have to say a huge thanks to the owner for allowing me to drive it, for allowing it to be here today. You are a legend and I'm gonna take care of this as if it were my own. It's, it's not really about speed for me today in this car. It's about sound and I mean, we're in an underpass. <laughs> It's better than a Formula One car. We all know Formula One cars don't sound that good today. This sounds better than the Formula One cars in their heyday. <laughs> oh, 
my god! This is gonna be nuts, okay. Uh, try and stay calm, Sam. I haven't gone above 5,000 RPM. I haven't gone above 5,000 RPM. <laughs> How can the tone change so much? Throughout the rev range. This is not a car, this is a joke. Oh. I'm speechless, I'm actually speechless. I'm sure you're picking up on that fact. I'm also trying to keep an eye on my Google Maps because I have no idea where I'm going. I've overtaken the Testarossa already. I guess that was predictable. I don't want to talk, because it'd be like going to watch Pavarotti sing, if he was still alive, and talking the whole time. You, like, no, you just don't. So maybe I shouldn't talk for the rest of this video. I said I wasn't going to talk, but if you think I'm overreacting, the, the uh, oral experience is so much, I'm transcending my own body, the vibrations are coming through me that are probably doing things to me that you don't want to see. The way I'm acting is as if I'm reaching maximum pleasure in life. That's how it feels. Little underpass. faces that only my wife usually gets to see. This is a joke. This is a joke. The best car in the world. Naturally, these cars get a lot of attention. Huge local spotter community here, which I had no idea about, but great to see. Uh, sadly, no one's really paying attention to the 360, though. Uh, I also worry that actually getting in this car now, after that 812 GTS, it's going to feel like a bit of a come down. Uh, but an amazing Ferrari-themed day and two completely different Ferrari experiences. Actually, three, considering I turned up with my own car. But that 812 GTS, I mean, is just some kind of perfection but the testarossa fantastic as well and of its era and special completely different to what i thought it would be but tons of fun so anyway i hope you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up if you have and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come